This is VOA News. I'm Joe Ramsey. Dramatic video released on Wednesday by Ukrainian police showed a woman being pulled alive from under rubble after a missile strike in Kramatorsk. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. According to the National Police of Ukraine, the woman and a man were rescued from a damaged building after a rescue operation that lasted several hours. Overnight, Russian missile attacks killed three people in the Black Sea city of Odessa and three in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine, Ukrainian officials said on Wednesday. Fighting rocked several vulnerable cities in western Sudan on Wednesday in an expansion of the country's almost two-month-old war as the number of people who have fled their homes rose above two million. The conflict between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces has caused a humanitarian crisis in Khartoum as well as other major cities in the region. Former U.S. President Donald Trump faces a tough task defending himself against his latest charges, according to legal experts. Reuters correspondent Chris Dignam reports. Former U.S. President Donald Trump again proclaimed his innocence in a speech following his arraignment in a Miami court over charges he illegally kept top-secret documents upon leaving the White House. I had every right to have these documents. But legal experts told Reuters the classified documents case against him is formidable, saying neither the law nor the facts appear to be on his side. Trump pleaded not guilty to the 37-count indictment in federal court. Reuters correspondent Chris Dignam. Find more news and information on our website, voanews.com, or follow us on the VOA mobile app. This is VOA News. American cable channel Fox News says a controversial on-screen message about U.S. President Joe Biden was taken off TV immediately after it aired Tuesday night and addressed. AP correspondent Julie Walker reports. The on-screen title read, Wannabe Dictator Speaks at the White House After Having His Political Rival Arrested. Other than saying it was taken down immediately and addressed, Fox did not elaborate. The White House has said Biden has had no contact with Attorney General Merrick Garland about the indictment. Several Fox commentators have, however, suggested the indictment was politically motivated. Julie Walker, New York. China is Israel's largest trade partner after the European Union and the United States, but Israel has had to curtail some of its economic agreements with China under pressure from the U.S., which has an increasingly tense relationship with China, led to Gradstein reports for VOA from Jerusalem. While China's involvement in the Middle East has generally been focused on trade, it recently entered the political arena when it brokered a deal for the resumption of diplomatic relations between Iran and Saudi Arabia. China's close relationship with Iran, as well as its traditionally pro-Palestinian stance, has worried many Israeli leaders. But some Israeli analysts say Chinese diplomatic efforts could benefit the region as a whole. Linda Gradstein for VOA News, Jerusalem. A U.S. federal appeals court has rejected a bid for bail by a self-exiled Chinese businessman awaiting trial in a $1 billion fraud case. The second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New York issued a two-page order Wednesday saying Guo Wangu will remain behind bars as ordered by a judge in a lower court. In April, a judge said there was clear and convincing evidence that Guao might not obey court orders and could harm the community if freed. Guao was arrested in March on charges including wire and securities fraud. He has pleaded not guilty. U.S. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Ron Wyden asked the Justice Department to open an antitrust investigation into the planned deal between the PGA Tour and Saudi-backed Live Golf, saying they believe it would result in a monopoly over professional golf operations. The PGA Tour, DP World Tour, and rival Saudi-backed Live Circuit, which had been involved in a bitter fight that split the sport, announced an agreement last week to merge and form one unified commercial entity. Find more on the story and the rest of the day's news on our website, voanews.com. I'm Joe Ramsey, VOA News.
This is VOA News in Washington. I'm Jeff Custer. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky Thursday urged Switzerland to allow the re-export of weapons to Ukraine, saying the move would be vital in combating the Russian invasion. The way's Diane Roberts reports. Zelensky said in a video address to both houses of the Swiss parliament, quote, we need weapons so we can restore peace in Ukraine, end quote. Switzerland has a long-standing policy of barring any country that buys Swiss arms from re-exporting them to the parties in a conflict. The request comes one day after Ukraine reported incremental advances in its counteroffensive against Russian forces in what it described as extremely fierce fighting. Diane Roberts, VOA News. Residents in Rushivka village in Ukraine's southeast are facing an acute water crisis that has left them collecting rainwater for survival after the, the destruction of the Kohovka Dam last week. Reuters correspondent Rachel Faber reports. Since the destruction of the Kahovka Dam last week, the nearby reservoir has lost around three quarters of its water. That's left hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians without normal access to drinking water across a swath of the south, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky. Water taps have been turned off for many of the village's residents. Those who had water storage pools rushed to fill them up. Only 15 percent of residents still have water running from their taps. Others have to rely on water brought in by the authorities. The local administration delivered 2,160 bottles of drinking water for residents on Wednesday. But more than 7,500 people live here. That was Reuters correspondent Rachel Faber reporting. You'll find expanded coverage of world news and events at voanews.com 24 hours a day. This is VOA News. South Korea's military reported North Korea, also known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or DPRK, fired two short-range ballistic missiles off its east coast Thursday in what the North had warned would be an inevitable response to joint live-fire military drills conducted between U.S. and South Korean forces earlier Thursday. In Washington, U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller issued a statement in response to the launch. The United States, along with our allies in the region, Japan, uh, the Republic of Korea, condemned today's DPRK missile launches. These launches are a clear violation of multiple U.N. Security Council resolutions. <clears throat> they demonstrate the threat of DPRK's unlawful weapons of mass destruction and ballistic missile uh, <clears throat> programs posed to the region, to international peace and security, and to the global nonproliferation regime. Miller added the U.S. has imposed sanctions on two DPRK individuals for supporting the nation's unlawful weapons of mass destruction and missile program. Canadian police say a bus carrying mostly senior citizens collided with a semi-trailer truck at a highway intersection in a rural part of the province of Manitoba Thursday, killing 15 people and injuring 10 more. Manitoba Royal Canadian Mounted Police Commander Rob Hill told reporters the incident occurred near Carberry, 170 kilometers west of Manitoba's capital, Winnipeg. What I can confirm right now is that a bus carrying approximately 25 people collided with a semi at the intersection of Highway 1 and Highway 5. The individuals in the bus were from Dauphin and surrounding areas, and it's my understanding that the majority were seniors. Hill added that 10 people were transported to local hospitals with various injuries. From his Twitter account, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau wrote, I'm sending my deepest condolences to those who lost loved ones today, and I'm keeping the injured in my thoughts. He added, Canadians are here for you. A new major study indicates confidence in the scientific community has declined among U.S. adults in 2022, driven by a partisan divide that emerged during the COVID-19 pandemic. The latest results from the General Social Survey, a long-running poll conducted by the Associated Press and the National Opinion Research Center at the University of Chicago, found 39 percent had a great deal of confidence in the scientific community. That's down 48 percent from 2021 and 2018. AP correspondent Maddie Burakoff said public confidence dropped in other institutions as well. The 2022 results from the survey showed that a lot of institutions were less trusted than they used to be, like the Supreme Court and education and the press. So it's part of this overall drop in trust in a lot of institutions, but the polarization is really showing up a lot when it comes to science and medicine. In Washington, I'm Jeff Custer. This is VOA News.
This is VOA News in Washington. I'm Jeff Custer. Ukraine's armed forces said Friday their counterattacking troops have achieved success along three stretches of the front line of the country's south and east. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma reports. According to Alexander Stupin, Ukrainian forces have moved further south of the town of Orykiv in the Zaporizhia region, in the direction of the village of Robotyne, as well as other locations on the boundary between Zaporizhia and the Donetsk province further east. Ukrainian troops advanced also in some areas around Voldovere in Donetsk, the site of one of the main tank battles in the war. Stupin adds Russian forces have launched more than 60 airstrikes and also made more than 80 attacks from multiple launch rocket systems on the positions of Ukrainian troops and settlements. He added, unfortunately, there are dead and wounded among the civilian population. I'm Charles de Ledesma. A delegation of African leaders were in Kyiv Friday to meet with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky as part of their mission to negotiate peace during with the conflict with uh, Ukraine and Russia. The delegation included leaders from five African nations led by South Africa, and they met with Zelensky after being greeted in Kyiv by a volley of Russian missiles and drone attacks. At a news conference with Zelensky following the talk, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said the African leaders were seeking to share the African perspective on finding peace. We are here to listen to listen both to President Zelensky and tomorrow we'll be listening to President Putin. And we do so with deep respect for the people of Ukraine, but also in recognition of the proposals that they have put forward as a peace formula. President Zelensky said he appreciated the African leader's effort, but reiterated peace talks with Russia would not be possible until Moscow withdraws its forces from occupied Ukrainian territory. This is VOA News. Russian President Vladimir Putin Friday confirmed that Russia's deployment of tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus has already happened, confirming comments made earlier this week by Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko. Speaking Friday at Russia's economic forum in St. Petersburg, Putin issued a veiled threat saying he could use the weapons but saw no need for Russia to resort to nuclear weapons for now. In Washington Friday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he was aware of the comments. We'll continue to monitor the situation very closely and and very carefully. We have no reason to adjust our own nuclear posture. Uh, We don't see any indications that Russia is preparing to use a nuclear weapon. President said uh, again this week that we remain committed to the defense of NATO, every inch of uh, its territory. The World Food Program reports it's ramping up food aid to feed 5.9 million people across Sudan as hunger rises in the war-torn nation. Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from Geneva. WFP reports it has provided emergency food assistance and nutrition support to nearly 1 million people in 14 of 18 Sudan states since the aid agency resumed its life-saving operations on May 3rd. Speaking from Port Sudan, WFP's acting country director, Abderrahman Megag, warns an estimated 2 to 2.5 million Sudanese are expected to slip into hunger in the coming months due to to the ongoing violence. He says the security situation makes it very challenging to provide aid to this desperately needy population. He says WFP assistance, assets, and premises have been repeatedly attacked and looted, hampering efforts to reach vulnerable families in dire need of assistance. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. Following a two-year investigation, the U.S. Justice Department said Friday the city of Minneapolis routinely uses excessive force and discriminates against black and Native American people. This report from Reuters. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland on Friday announced the findings of a two-year investigation by the Department of Justice of the Minneapolis Police Department, concluding the department had a pattern or practice of using excessive force and discriminating against black people. Garland said the abuses amounted to violations of residents' constitutional rights. The Department of Justice has concluded that there is reasonable cause to believe that the Minneapolis Police Department and the city of Minneapolis engaged in a pattern or practice of conduct that violates the First and Fourth Amendments of the United States Constitution. According to the DOJ, Minneapolis has agreed to negotiate an agreement with the Justice Department on reforming the police department known as a consent decree, which will be overseen by a federal judge. That's Reuters correspondent Freddie Joyner reporting. In Washington, I'm Jeff Custer. This is VOA News.